So yesterday I was thinking about the national debt. <laughs> I really was, because I was thinking about how different the world was in 1990 when I started at UCSD, so I Googled it. It was $3.2 trillion. Manageable. <laughs> Less than a, a fifth of what it is today. And that brings us to our next speaker. Valerie Ramey is a professor and chair of the Department of Economics. Tonight, she'll discuss what history can tell us about the potential effects of two varying paths, options faced by governments in many industrialized nations of either adopting additional stimulus programs or reducing taxes and cutting spending. Welcome. Thank you. I'm a macroeconomist, and I've been spending quite a bit of my time recently trying to answer this question. Can the government spend us to prosperity? Well, anybody who hasn't been asleep during the last four years knows that this is a pretty important question for public policy. So in 2008, 2009, we had a lively debate about whether we should have a stimulus program to get us out of the recession. And in fact, they did pass one, almost a trillion dollars. That died down a little bit, and it wasn't debated as much during the election, but the day after the election, we all woke up with a little bit of an election hangover and said, oh my gosh, the fiscal cliff is less than two months away. If no laws are changed on January 1st, government spending is going to plummet, and taxes are gonna rise really significantly. And the question is, is that gonna throw us into a recession? So where do we get this idea that the government spending is somehow linked to the economy? Well, we get it from John Maynard Keynes, who in 1936 wrote, when involuntary unemployment exists, wasteful, meaning deficit spending, may nevertheless enrich the community on balance. Pyramid building, earthquakes, even wars may serve to increase wealth. He went on to say that when there's high unemployment in the economy, the treasury should take banknotes, stuff them into bottles, throw them into abandoned coal mines, fill it up with rubbish, and let free enterprise work. Firms will hire workers from the unemployed, go dig out those banknotes, and the economy will thrive. <laughs> That's the essence of Keynesian thinking. That is what is behind what it's in our undergraduate textbooks, and it's what most economists in the Obama administration believe. So the question is, is it true? Well, it's really difficult to test this idea. Now, ideally, we would have the IMF conduct a randomized experiment on the countries of the world, right? <laughs> Increase government spending a little bit here, decrease it there, send in some simple statisticians, we'd have the answers. Nobody will let the IMF do it, so we have to somehow tease it out of historical data, and that's where my research has gone. To give you an idea of why it's so difficult to do, let me go to the recent history from 2007 up through 2011. So at the end of 2007 and early in 2008, we began to get an indication that the economy was going into recession. So we had the Bush tax cuts pass in February 2008. The rebates were sent out in the summer, but the unemployment rates kept increasing. TARP was passed in October 2008. The unemployment rate kept increasing. The Obama stimulus was passed in February 2009, but the unemployment rate kept increasing. They spent it, the unemployment rate stayed high. It's come down a little bit, but not much. So if we took some very simple statistical analysis, we might conclude that an increase in government spending raises the unemployment rate. But we know that there's what we call reverse causality. So the question is, how do we tease it out? So my research analyzes the effect of large changes in government spending that aren't the reactions to recession. I'm trying to get the causality out of this research. And it tries to answer the question, what is the government spending multiplier? Now, where could I get this kind of data? Well, if you look at the US, this is federal government spending. The blue line is defense spending, and the green line is the total spending. Now, this doesn't include Medicare and Social Security, which are a different kind, those are considered transfers. Now, those red lines there are the beginning of wars or major military buildups. So we have World War II. We have the Korean War, and it was the start of the Cold War. We had the Vietnam War, 
the Carter-Reagan buildup after the Soviet Union went into Afghanistan, and we have 9-11. Now, there's little tiny wiggles in this, but you can see the important movements are military spending. So my research put together, first of all, taking the data back to before World War II, uh, looks at this statistically to see what happens to the economy when there's military spending, because most of the increases of military spending are due to some kind of event overseas. So it's not a reaction to recession. And I do in-depth analysis doing case studies. So let me give you an example of one of the case studies. And I should say when I did this also, I, it's really important to understand what firms and consumers are anticipating. And you can't get that from the kind of data that the government publishes. So I had to read Business Week every week from 1939 to the present <laughs> to figure out what they were doing. It was a lot of work. It took a lot of time, but it was absolutely fascinating to sort of live through history, but with my 2020 hindsight, I knew how World War II would turn out. I knew that <laughs> the Allies would win, but of course they didn't, so that was a really neat part of it. So one of the case studies I did was what happened during World War II with unemployment and government spending. So 1939, the unemployment rate was still 17%, and this is despite FD, you know, Roosevelt trying to spend us out of the uh, Depression, we still had very high unemployment rates. But then they really came down to about 1%, at the same time government spending went up. So a lot of people remember this in the back of their head, they said, yes, government spending can get us out of recessions. Well, my more detailed analysis figured out the following. Unemployment, total unemployment went down by 9 million people. But one of the key reasons it did is because the number of people in the military went up by almost 12 million. It was the draft and the conscription that was a key process for reducing the unemployment rate. So overall, what I found was government spending multiplier is probably less than one. That means that when the government raises spending, it lowers private spending. Government spending does lower unemployment, but only by increasing government employment. I can't find much evidence for private employment. Okay? So this research has been having an impact on academic circles, which is always nice, but it's also having an impact on policy circles. So I've been traveling a lot, and last year I went and was on a, pan a special panel for the Congressional Budget Office talking about my research, and I got a nice thank you note from Douglas Elmendorf, who's the director of the Congressional Budget Office. And the thank you note said, Valerie, thanks so much for presenting your research on fiscal multipliers at the recent meeting of our panel of economic advisors. Being able to talk with you directly advanced our thinking important ways. Indeed, right after the meeting, we adjusted the estimates of the effect of fiscal policy that I presented in testimony last week and that we published in our regular review of the ARRA. And so when you see the Congressional Budget Office estimates also for the fiscal cliff, they've uh, incorporated a lot of the estimates that I had in my research. Now he says, I look forward to seeing you again at the NBR fiscal conference in a few weeks. That conference was last December in Milan, and it was very nice. We spent two days talking about the dire situation of both European countries and the US. So after two days of that, we all had to go out and have a little fun in Milan. <laughs> so Doug Albendorf is second from the left. That's me. The one at the end was my advisor in graduate school, Robert Hall. He's also the chair of the Business Cycle Dating Committee. So he's the one that decides whether we're officially in a recession. And after all of that dire fiscal talk, we had to have a little bit of Italian Prosecco in order to forget our fiscal worries. 